Hey, what's up? Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV. Yup, it is finally time. After using the LG C165 inch 4K Smart Self Lit OLED TV with AI Think You for two weeks, here is my full video review to help you make a purchase decision and also to find out if this TV is the best TV for 2021. So keep watching. Now, if you haven't watched my unboxing and my first impressions video, I will link it at the card above and also at the description as I not only talk about the key features of the TV, but I also show the very aesthetically pleasing LG Gallery Stand as well, which could be one of the options to really display this amazing piece of a TV as I went with mounting the TV on the wall to give that sort of a floating effect since I've always been a fan of a very clean and minimalist design. So ever since I mounted the TV on the wall, that alone was already something that immediately had a huge impact on my viewing pleasure even before switching the TV on because of how thin the sides were. And this is LG's way of telling us that TV should not only look good when it's on but also when it's turned off as well. And because of this super thin form factor, it elevated the floating effect even more whether or not you're watching TV during the day or even at night as well. Now, I also found that not only the pots at the sides were super easy to access even when it's mounted on the wall, but even the pots like the Ethernet port and the additional HDMI port at the back was easily accessible where I have intentionally left one of the side HDMI ports empty just in case I would like to plug in my laptop or even a PC when I want to. So yes, this was certainly something that already gave me such a pleasant experience when I was using the TV every single day. Next, let's not waste any time and dive in straight into the TV's display and what makes this TV's technology great. So what is the difference between an LED TV and an OLED TV for layman terms? Firstly, it's in the name because the TV is called a self-lit OLED TV as the lights are individually emitted compared to a typical LED where it uses a backlight that has several panels in between which means that even black pixels are lighted up even when it's not supposed to hence giving you a non-true blacks compared to a true blacks that an OLED TV produces. Then LED typically has three colors which which is green, red and blue, also known as RGB, where else OLED has RGBW, where W obviously stands for white, thus providing a better overall brightness as well. And while brightness is great, it also has great eye comfort with less blue light emission and flicker free as it is TUV Rainline certified as well. So next, let's talk about how my experience was when I was using this TV daily for several situations, especially with the new Alpha 9 Gen 4 AI processor. Now, as mentioned in my usual smartphone reviews, I'm not a huge fan of watching movies and videos on a smartphone for a very long time, as I've always enjoyed watching every single show on my TV as I don't really commute much. And even if I do, I rather listen to music than sit and watch movies for a very long time on my smartphone. And coming from an LED TV to this OLED TV, the biggest difference that I could immediately tell is the amazing black levels on the TV as to how it was mentioned in the technological point of view because gone are the days of having a darker shades of black looking more greyish instead and gone are the days where I could barely tell and see those blacks during the day too since I watch lots of TVs during the day and work more at night and as you guys can see my living area is extremely bright. Now as for picture modes, I was on the film maker mode all the way whether or not it's during the day or even at night as I do prefer the real sort of colour calibration based on what the movie creator intended for the colours to be. But of course, you can always change to other default picture modes like standard, APS or auto power save mode, cinema and more or you can always adjust it manually on the advanced settings. Then diving further into my movie viewing experience on Netflix since the TV has Dolby Vision IQ. Here's where I could see a huge difference in the overall image quality and because the visuals look extremely nice, I've become spoilt by just picking and choosing content that only has Dolby Vision. So I hope more Dolby Vision content comes in here in Malaysia, especially on Disney Plus Hotstar as well. So the next most consumed media on TV is of course for me watching football. 
Now, as soon as I got this TV, I immediately subscribed to 4K UHD Football on Astro. And here's where, once again, I cannot go back to watching football on just HD, man. Because not only it was really sharp and vibrant on sports mode, but I could really see how well the motion and the movement of the players during sprinting across the field. The viewing angles when watching TV, when watching football was also really great. And this may sound like I'm over exaggerating, but no kidding guys, this new OLED Motion Pro technology felt as though the players were actually there on the screen. And yes, I do miss going to Anfield and this is the closest experience that I can get to Anfield, my friends. Next is of course gaming, as that is one of the key reasons anyone would consider getting the TV as it is NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium compatible on this LG C1 TV. But before anything, in case it has not turned on, be sure to turn on the game optimizer in the settings menu just in case you haven't done so, where usually it will also turn on automatically as well. And here is where you can see all the adjustments for the black stabilizer and the white stabilizer as well, and also other settings to change the game modes between FPS, RPG and more. And with this, the first game that came to my mind was Forza Horizon 5 and the gaming experience was even better the more I played the game and the 120Hz variable refresh rate and the auto low latency mode with 1 milliseconds response time with absolutely no screen tearing could really be felt so well when I was playing this particular game. So yes, there goes my daily productivity. <clears throat> Then playing other games like Mortal Kombat and HDR games like Uncharted was also really nice as well since the HDR capabilities of the TV, also known as HGIG mode, really shines over here when it comes to HDR gaming. Then finally, if you're like me who loves to watch YouTube videos on a bigger screen TV too, then you'll really appreciate the amazing color accuracy of the filmmaker mode for the TV as it's not only where I watch my majority of my YouTube videos, but as a content creator, I actually use the TV as my reference playback when I upload my videos on YouTube since it has the best color representation compared to a typical PC monitor screen. Next, let's talk about the audio. Now, out of the box, the TV has Dolby Atmos support whether or not it's through the TV speakers or even externally if you plug in a Dolby Atmos soundbar through the HDMI eART port or EARC port, specifically marked as HDMI 2.1 on this TV. Now, one of my biggest worries is whether or not the sound on the TV could really project at its full potential since it is mounted on the wall. And while I do prefer a dedicated soundbar, but I was very surprised by the great audio output and clarity on the speakers as well since there is an option to toggle the AI Sound Pro and the AI Acoustic Tuning that collects the sound around the TV and analyzes it accordingly. And here is a quick sound test when it comes to music and also through movie as well. So the operating system on this LG C1 65-inch 4K Smart self lit OLED TV with AI ThinQ is the latest WebOS 6.0. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again that this is hands down the best operating system that I've personally experienced compared to any other OS on a TV. The apps and the overall OS was way more optimized than a typical Android TV where everything felt way much better. Now, initially, I thought that it's going to take me a while to get used to this new iteration of the WebOS 6.0. But because of how the UI is still one of the best smart TV experiences, especially with the Magic Remote, which have become super dependent on using it with the floating mouse cursor experience and of course, the scroll wheel feature as well. So yes, this new version felt very much home to me where the new UI was incredibly designed with a great arrangement of content that you're watching, content recommendation, and also the overall apps as well. Now at the home screen at the very top, you'll find widgets like the AccuWeather, AI, or account settings and the search widget. 
Then the second row shows what's trending depending on your subscription where mine is set to Amazon Prime Video. Then the next row is the app list where you can get to edit the app list to arrange it accordingly. And you can also adjust it based on the intelligent edit of the frequency that you use every single app. Following that, there's the row for the home dashboard for different inputs and outputs available and used. Then there's web browser, other video content on Amazon Prime Video and YouTube. And finally, new releases as well. Now, similar to the previous generation web OS, there's also the home dashboard, which has a very clean tile arrangement system to not only view all the inputs on a single page, but also other options like AirPlay, where you can mirror your devices directly through that. Then there's also the home IoT devices, whether it's connecting to the LG ThinQ devices and other IoT devices. Then there's also the voice command feature which you can Open press Netflix. and hold it on a remote and perform voice commands as well mm -hmm. like opening apps or even asking the time. Now in conclusion, I'm gonna just keep it simple and straightforward with what I think of this LG C1 65-inch 4K Smart Self-Lit OLED TV with AI ThinQ. Now this TV is indeed the ultimate all-rounder packed with a premium OLED technology where not only it has the perfect blacks and amazing brightness value but the overall wide range of color is truly world-class. Now if you're interested, I will leave links below for you to get it and yes, it might be on a higher price range but you won't be disappointed with the TV because my friend, if you're looking for a TV that can last for a really, really long time this is it.